What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Frame by Frame podcast. It's a big episode. It's episode 10. Yay. Yay. We need the sound of, Don't sound uh, too excited. You need the sound of Monty Python and the Holy say, Grail of the, the menstruals. Okay. And there was much rejoicing. Yay. <laughs> we might have to do that. We'll see. We'll, we'll play around with Post and see what we do. Know. As always, I'm your host, Robert Barnett. With me this week is Jared Harper. Yes. Sarah Montanari's back. What's up? And Jesse Hendrickson is back. No, I'm not. You're not bad. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't oh, recognize her. She does, she's got her hair different. It's not she Jesse. She has ears. Ears? I do have oh, ears. Yeah. This is a whole... Everyone... And gauges. And gauges. <laughs> not a real term. No one listens to that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're back. It's been a while since all of us have been in the same room talking mm-hmm. about films. Yeah. Are we excited? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the excitement. I, I thought I yes. was the tired one here, but apparently not. So it's been a while. We got all we all got rusty, and it's all your fault. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I I I'm sorry to the internet because I made everyone else around me tired just by being tired, and now mm-hmm. I feel less tired. I'm not get, tired. All right, let's Good. Do it. All right, there we go. <laughs> you get in podcast mode, and you're just. So you got a yeah, channel exactly. Tigger. Tigger. <laughs> That's enough the walls. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, uh, being that today is the 10th episode, it's kind of the first anniversary for us, which is really, really exciting. Um, it's going to be kind of just a movie chatting segment is what we're going to do today. Just kind of, I'm going to sort of faux interview everybody and give everyone a chance um, who's frequents these podcasts to sort of talk about why movies are important to them, to us, to uh, what makes us so interested in recording these podcasts. And we always get to see movies together, the four of us and another group of friends. We usually tend to go see films together a lot. We're always midnighting things up. And uh, we should all have a chance to kind of let everyone know on the internet listening world who we are. This and, feels like a Charlie and Rose why we're show. Awesome. <laughs> Not quite as much. Well, less, less start, prestigious. Do you like James Lipton? That would be great. No, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't have that in me. I'm sorry. If someone else oh, wants to take man. up that mantle. I was with a friend last night who was doing the James Lipton voice. It was, it was pretty awesome. So was it efficient? Should we have brought this person on the podcast? Mm. Maybe next time. I don't know. I don't know. I think he hates movies. No. Well, he does not count as human. Yeah, you cannot hate, hate, hate movies. It's like hating oxygen or food. Yeah. Both are pretty awesome. <laughs> and necessary for life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's funny All how that works. Them. Yeah, it's like a cycle of life. Circle of life. So, anyway, um, before we get to the movie chatting stuff, um, I figured I would give. I know at least Sarah and Jared. You guys recently had a chance to see Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. So we'll chat movies before we. So we'll chat, chat movies, movies before we chat movies. Okay. We'll chat movie <laughs> before we chat movies. Uh, Unless uh, you haven't seen it, have you, Justin? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, it's the only new movie I can think of to talk about unless anyone else can think of anything. It's been a very slow, slow time at the box office. Yeah. It, ha- it really has been. I think we've all been on like the downward slope since we saw Conan. So I'm trying Conan to think Conan started the downward <laughs> slope. Exactly. Although, do you In the best talk possible. about Attack the Block? Um, no. I haven't, re- I haven't seen it. Yes. Okay. We, there's a few reasons why we can't talk about it. Day. That's definitely part of it. Okay. Um, so Sorry to tease you. Anyway. Going on Tuesday. Great. We'll figure out schedules. Yeah. Attack the Block will be seen again very soon in the future. And Jared and I have a plan for Attack the Block, so we don't want to speak about opinions on that too much. Yes. But it's good. Okay. Um, So (laughs) as far as Don't Be Afraid of the Dark is concerned, you guys just saw it. came out last week. Um, Mm What do you guys think? Sarah, what did you think of the movie? <laughs> I now we're too had afraid. a little bit of mixed opinions on Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. It was a good movie. It was a well-made movie. But it, being that it's in the horror genre, I, had, I was not scared at all. And you told so me I that. I thought it fell really short. But I thought the creatures actually looked really amazing. Which, yeah, which usually I hate creatures and they always do a good job of keeping them in the shadows and then they pop out and I'm like, oh, that just looks stupid and you've completely lost me. But they actually looked really cool and they had a lot of um, like murals and artistry on them that was actually really cool and I enjoyed mm-hmm. it a lot. But as far as the movie goes, not so much scary, which isn't a horrible thing. Do you but feel like it had, movie? did it feel like there was the stamp of Del Toro? I mean, we know he did not direct it, but did it feel that way still? A little bit. A little bit in the creature design and a little bit in the backstory and that sort of thing. The story, because he did, he co-wrote the script. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he was definitely involved with that aspect. Um, the more but, aspects, the better. But he's come out and, and said very publicly when he produces a movie, his job is to find people to make the movie, then he gets out of their way. Like, he is not... What a good guy. He's not yeah. one of those super involved producers that meddles with things where he doesn't belong. He finds the guy he believes is right to direct the film and then gets out of his way. As it should be. Yeah, why doesn't so. that happen any know, more seriously. often? I don't know, so. with that. So. But, Joe, you still liked it, right? I mean, it was not it was not a terrible experience. I said, so yeah, no, it wasn't bad at all, because I know a lot of horror movies, when they're not scary, it's just horrible. But it did actually kind of have a plot, and it was good. It just... I didn't care too much. 
Really? And I really so just wanted them to pump one of the little things and I just <laughs> didn't do it. I was surprised in the trailer you get the few just quick glimpses of it and you can mm -hmm. see that they're really tiny like knee-high looking creatures yeah. from what we've seen only in the trailer. Mm -hmm. Speaking of someone who hasn't seen the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's funny that you said that because now yeah. I myself want to punt one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, they're just right around. I just wanted to punt one the whole movie. Yeah. 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 I mean I guess it's good it wasn't a total wash. Jared, I, see, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, in terms of like it wasn't like a terrifying movie. It wasn't like, but it was it was the fun kind of scary that it had. I think it it really did a great job building tension, having a lot of suspense within the individual scenes. I think they may have revealed the creatures too soon. Oh, that's um, a shame. I think the design of the creatures was great. I think a lot of the art within the film that's associated with them was more effective than the creatures themselves. Mm. I agree. Um, but, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought the performances for what they were were great. I think it's a complete mistake for the film to have an R rating. Really? It's definitely... Was that rated R? That yeah. was rated R. And it should not be I R at all. Maybe only for that opening sequence, but even then... I don't think the opening sequence is... R. No. I, I, That's weird. The opening sequence wasn't, to me, the, the part that would have gotten an R. I think it was more the ending, which mm. I think was earned. Um, and I think it got it more just for tone, for being a, a very That's creepy... Kind of what I thought. It's, it's a very creepy, very suspenseful movie, but I think the creatures, they worked better for the first, like, half of the movie or so where you don't see them I was about to say, it sounds like the half where you didn't even see them. Yeah, that was much more effective. Later, it was still very effective, but it's still very creepy. Um... And where it goes is very interesting, but... See, I think what's kind of disappointing to hear, even though you both have positive things to say overall about it, and even you, Jared, saying how much you still really liked the movie, it's sad to hear that it wasn't really overly scary. Because that was the thing that yeah. the trailer showed to me more than anything, is that it looked like it was going to be tonally just dreadful. And apparently that's not the case. But it's just, I, it's a very straightforward, like, haunted house movie. And that's what the newer trailer started to show us, I think, as well, is it didn't look unique like I, like the teaser kind of teased us with, if you will. Yeah. That it was going to be more of and like... the teaser had the best scene, I thought, in the whole movie. Yeah, and, that and I knew that. that. I jumped a little bit, but I still was never, like, scared or horrified. Or... Yeah. It and I think like... the other thing is I had a little <clears throat> bit of trouble getting behind, like, feeling sorry for the characters. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. that as well, Jared. Well, no, I, it's... But, I mean, your main character is a... What, she's 10? Yeah, Or so? Like, See the little girl? 10 or younger yeah. year old girl? Like, I've, we've seen that. Yeah, but that's, so But that's... The, the movie, it's... I don't know, it's... The thing that's frustrating about it is that it's it's something you've seen before, that it's a little girl experiencing these, these terrors in this haunted house that all the adults doubt, don't believe her. And that's what the film's really about, is being a kid and not being understood by adults and them doubting everything that you say and do. And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what the, the film's about. But I can see why that would be frustrating, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it because the adults are secondary characters in the film. Yeah. They're very much just there to help forward the plot a lot. They kind of look that way. Mm -hmm. Like they're like they're just there to say, "Well, what's going on? Oh, yeah. I don't really know." Yeah. yeah. Their their relationships aren't as critical um, as I don't know, in the grander context of the story. Oh. It's it's more about the little girl and how she experiences this world. So I guess it sounds good but standard is kind of the impression. Yeah, it's very a lot of it's weird too cuz a lot of the conventions that they use are very overused the whole kid being haunted thing. But they use it very, well. But the whole reveal on the creatures and stuff I thought was pretty creative. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that That's coming good. at all actually. <clears throat> no. Mm. Okay. So I kind of called that from the very beginning. Really? Oh yeah. Oh nice. That first scene I called it, but I just for some reason didn't think it had anything else deeper going on. This is so cryptic. This yeah. is starting to get. I know. The cryptic I'm trying not to ruin yeah, anything it's, for you. It's hard. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's good. It's it's, it's worth. It's very yeah. much worth seeing. It's a very well made movie. Like so you I said, recommend it? I absolutely recommend Sarah, it. Sarah, would you recommend it? I would say definitely see it, but I don't know. I don't know if I would pay ten bucks for it. Not necessarily a theater yeah. experience. No. With the, with the lights off, of course, though. Oh yeah, if you're gonna watch I mean, it, you're not supposed to be afraid of the dark. So any movie, you should, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, and I think the whole "Don't be afraid of the dark" thing. I wish they would have almost used that more. I think that's another thing that actually really kind of made me mad is that the light supposedly hurt these creatures, but it didn't actually deter them. Like they were just like hmm. they, they kept attacking. They're them. like, well, this really well, they, sucks. They but find we're ways. They find yeah. ways around it, and there are things they have to do. You know, to show them on film to. You have, you have to use your imagination to decide, okay, this scene where they're, you know, out in force, 
It's actually pitch black. They just have to photograph well, it. No, so no, it's... Not, not that bit. I'm talking about like the bits with the flashlights and stuff. Mm-hmm. When they're swinging a flashlight around, I yeah. want all the creatures to just be gone and like away from that light, or be like physically burned from the light, or something. But it doesn't seem like but a proper just, defense. Yeah, they were just like, um, we don't like the light, and I was like, that's kind of stupid. Weak. That's like I feel like movies like Darkness Falls have done it a lot better, where she could not go in the light. At tooth Fairy. All. That was the Tooth Fairy movie, that wasn't it? That is the Tooth Fairy movie. Yeah, and like she's a lot of times on the edge of the darkness. Like there'll be a light beam. And she'll be right on the like, edge because she can't, she can't get into in. the light. She can't physically be in the light. And I wish, like, the It's like a vampire kind of. So, yeah. yeah. Which is more effective, I think. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oh, well. But At least it doesn't sound like a total wash. No, it's, no, no, it was something it good, though. It looked like it's it would not... be fantastic. It sounds like it's just pretty good.